لو انا ما يعني ميت او شيء ما حد يعرف قصتي فهي قصتي قصه من بين قصص بالاف الاشخاص من كل فرع من الفروع زرتها انه الكيماوي في عالم كثير عم تشتغل على الكيماوي، في عالم كثير عم تشتغل على البراميل، في عالم عم تشتغل بس هدول يعني يمكن وضعهم اسهل من المعتقل. بني ادم اللي عم يموت بصاروخ عم يكون هو عايش ما عم يتعذب، عايش عم يجي صاروخ عم يموت. يلي بالفرع كل يوم عم يموت 100 موته. العشرات عم يموتوا يوميا بفروع الامن السوري وبابشع الاساليب التعذيب، بابشع اساليب التعذيب When you are taken by the security, the military security branch, you are just going to your fate. Since the beginning of Syria's uprising, many have died in government detention facilities. In 2012, Human Rights Watch identified and mapped 27 of these detention centers. While accounts by released detainees and defectors indicated that detention and torture were rampant, and detainees were dying in large numbers, the exact scale remained unknown. Then, in August 2013, a military defector codenamed Caesar smuggled tens of thousands of photographs out of Syria showing the bodies of dead detainees. He said he worked as a military forensic photographer, had personally photographed the bodies and archived thousands of photographs. To verify the photographs, we began to search for the families of those in the images. I'm in Tariq, in Tariq, I'm from Liyal Ahmed. To Liyal Adl. Liyal. Hey, I'm going to add on the other one. 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 Ahmed the Muslimani was a 14-year-old boy from Dabaa. أحمد لما استشهد أخوه شادي طلعناه على لبنان بس مشان يبتعد عن عن موضوع المداهمات اللي كان الأمن يقوم فيها. On August 2nd, 2012, Ahmed returned to Syria because his mother had died. هاجز الكسوة على الباب. فنزلوا أحمد ونزلوا الشباب وقالوا لهم عبو كياس وأخذوا منهم الموبايل. بعد حوالي ساعة بيصيح الضابط لمين الموبايل اللي أنت سبعينها؟ بقول له حمود إلي بقول له أنت يا حيف مو يا حيف مو تعال جاي وامسكوا موبايلاتكم أنتوا يلا روحوا راحوا الشباب هذلاك وأخذ أحمد هاي الغرفة اللي أخذوا أحمد عليها شرق الحاجز شرق الحاجز هذا هي هاي أخذوا عليها أخذوا عليها واختفى أحمد أنكل sought information from government officials but received none Five months after Ahmed's arrest, a man with strong government contacts came to his office. وابن اخوك موجود بالمخابرات الجويه ووصيت عليه ووقف الضرب عنه قلت له ايه بدي الولد اني ما قلت لك لي لا يا استاذ انا احنا احنا بس جبنا لك معلومه انه حي ولا مش حي اما اذا بدك تطلعوا له مبلغ خاص قلت له ايش يعني؟ قال مش اقل من 2 مليون After raising 1 million Syrian pounds he was told that his nephew would be released in 10 days but Ahmed didn't come home in March 2015, several thousand photographs of the dead detainees were posted online. It was the first time families could search for their loved ones among the photographs. هو أحمد ورقم حاطين لي رقم عليه أحمد بدل ما كان روح صار رقم
Each dead body was assigned three numbers. One referring to the detention facility where he was held, a number issued by the security branch that held him, and one by the forensic doctors of the military hospitals where many of the photographs were taken. Bodies were transferred according to written instructions. Officials knew exactly how many people were dying. One of the central questions about the Caesar photographs is why did so many people die in detention? Former detainees held in the same places as most of the Caesar victims described the conditions. They told us the overcrowded conditions were unbearable. الشيء المميت بفرع الشام هو عدد الأشخاص المسجونين ضمن المهجع يعني نحن كان المهجع عنا حوالي 115 شخص مثلا فرضا أنا كل كل ثلاث ساعات كنا أنا واقف بعد ثلاث ساعات بقعد هيك طبعا ما في مجال بعد ثلاث ساعات مثلا شوي برتكي وهيك يعني بالدور يعني ما في torture was widespread فتنا لجوا لقينا في صف للمساجين قاعدين طالعينهم نازلين فيهم ضرب الكرباج السجان بيكون معه مثل البربيش كرباج بيسموه له كذا يعني قبضه واحده بس له شعبه باثنين بينزل فيها ضرب مشان تسلخ مرتين او كبل ومجدل كبل رباعي سميك هيك وراجع شخص من دمشق مسكوه كانوا كل يوم بيطلعوا مرتين يعني على التحقيق وما بيعطي بعد اسبوع طلعوا قام رجع منتهي يعني يعني كبو كب يعني كان دم لانه جلده يعني وكانه انت اذا بدك تعمل هيك بتشيل جلده بايدك يعني شيء عجيب تعذيب عجيب وغريب يعني كان اتس كولد شبح ام زي تاير يور هاندز توجذر اند زي ستارت ليفتين Lifting, they they have it lifted on a rope, kind of thing, and they just lift it, lift it until your your whole body looks straight. You're on on like tiptoe. I started to cough, blood. I was my my lungs got really I don't know really damaged, and. His blood as well. بعد شهرين ثلاثة أربعة خمسة مثلاً بالمعتقل ما 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 بيستوعب الموضوع يعني بيصير عنده يعني عقله بيتوقف بيصير عنده صراع فالمخ بيتجمد ما عاد يستوعب إنه شو هات يعني شو هالتعذيب شو هالضرب شو عالم عم تموت مثلاً قدام عيننا مثلاً. Torture, beatings, and even mild infections could have fatal consequences. نادرا ما بتلاقي انه اليوم ما في ولا موقوف يعني ما حدا مات يعني ولا باقي الايام ثلاثه اربعه خمسه سته وصلت امرار 11 انا مره شاهد على يوم 11 موقوف بيوم واحد صراحه 
I'd become one, one of the guys who wash the dead before they, they, they were sent out. So during that period and the after, uh, I had washed 73 people. Can you talk to the Sajjan about if there is a disease or they want to die? What does he say? He says that he doesn't have a heart attack. We shared a set of the photographs showing 19 victims with a team of forensic pathologists from Physicians for Human Rights. There were four deaths we attributed to starvation. There were, one of them was very, very um, malnourished person. There were six cases where there was blunt force trauma. What I can predict is looking at the injury pattern and saying that yes, in fact, there is enormous amount of trauma and some of them was, the, 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 the pattern of injury was so severe that you could see large blotches of blue discoloration because of beating they had sustained. Some of them showed defensive wounds, which implied that the person was aware and cognizant that he or she was being attacked. Now this, this was a person that was partially wrapped in a plastic sheet. You can look at his face and his face will tell you that he's pretty young. He has this enormous areas of contusion of his upper extremity, uh, both the, the left forearm, the elbows, and the, and the right uh, arm. And then as you go down to the lower extremities, you see this uh, uh, very significant injuries. Uh, uh, one thing that we consider is possible that we're using some sort of a rounded object, a baton, mm -hmm. uh, or a pipe. We um, came to the conclusion that his death was in custody, obviously and that um, the underlying cause is blunt force traumatic injury. The location of injuries tell a story. A person stumbling and falling down usually has injuries on exposed areas of the body. He may have scraped the knee or he may have scraped the forehead, but you don't find injuries on, on, on the abdominal area and in, in the arms, the inner surface of the arms, on thighs. So the pattern of injury, there's no doubt, are inflicted injuries. In this picture, you can clearly see the, the collarbones, the clavicles, the ribs. Uh, as you go further down, you begin to see uh, what a lot of wasting he has. He has a loss of muscle mass. I, I, think, I think that the, um, the photographs speak for themselves. Uh, um, the patterns of injuries are so clear. Um, and uh, they, they clearly show that these people has been starved to death, uh, many of them. Uh, they clearly show injury patterns that are not consistent with falls. Um, they are consistent with torture. Dead detainees were transferred from detention facilities to two military hospitals in the Damascus area. There, they were photographed initially in morgues and later in a courtyard that Caesar identified as a garage of one of the military hospitals. Using satellite imagery, geolocation techniques, combined with the testimonies of defectors from two military hospitals, we were able to confirm that many of the photographs were taken in the courtyard of Military Hospital 601. الله سبحانه وتعالى ما رزقني بس هو كان كل حياتي الله يسر الله يسر. The people shown in the Caesar photographs were starved, beaten, and tortured in a systematic way and on a massive scale. These photographs represent just a fraction of people who have died while in Syrian government custody. Many are still suffering the same fate. Unless independent international monitors are allowed into Syria's detention centers, detainees will continue to suffer and die, and countless families will live through never-ending anguish.